Uh, what did I do to be regarded in such high esteem if we haven't even started the conversation? Good afternoon. For, thank you for being here, for dedicating some of your time for this. Luisa Maria, the young secretary who has given a lot to talk about precisely because of her youth. And today what we want to talk about is human capital. Human capital and the exact ingredient to reach success. I want to ask you that the answers you'll give me, especially Joanna Norelli, to please explain to us what you do in your daily life because it will help us, help us understand what we talk about in terms of human capital and talent. What I want to say today, you know already, the revolution in Mexico, we are focused on four. Here is the fourth transformation. Out there is the fourth revolution the technological revolution that is to say the arrival of new technologies that represent the sector that are being that are being revolution communication and then comes 5g those who heard about the the amount of information and the speed at which we will be able to see anything how are we going to take advantage of this? How are we going to make sure this revolution will help us close the gaps in Mexico to prevent from this stagnation we have in education, in employment quality, all of the stagnation we show in any area like services, health, how are we going to turn this technology into a tool to close the gaps and not another gap to be closed? That is the challenge for this afternoon. We will open the session for a QA. So when we open the question and answer session, please just ask your question. Otherwise, I'm just going to interrupt you because the idea is to have as much participation as possible with our panel members and it's a wonderful thing, they are all women. Quickly, human capital, the definition by the World Bank, which is a quite, a, quite a universal one. It's made up of knowledge, skills and health accumulated, accumulated along the life of people that allows them to reach the potential as productive members of society and telling benefits for the person, communities and countries. Unfortunately, the picture is not pretty in Mexico, not yet at least. I want to give the floor to Luisa Maria Alcalde, the, ministry, the Minister of Labor. The new administration with President López Obrador priorities and the interception between the revolution and strategies to create quality jobs with this very ambitious program of helping youngsters. Welcome and thank you. Thank you, Gabi. Yes, indeed, we are facing a situation of huge challenges in terms of the world of labor in a country where more than half of men and women who work do it informally. That is to say, they have no access to social security, which means not only health, but also they are not saving for the future. They don't get house credits in a country where the labor market has been punished with very low wages, with an economic poli policy of keeping low wages instead of being attractive to foreigners even. And this has brought not only high levels of poverty and inequality, and I would even link to it violence, because one of the main causes for violence, the violence we see in this country, is linked to this, with a very poor market labor, with the lack of options and alternatives. That's why we have some major challenges and we've been getting our priorities straight in different axes. The first is youngsters building the future program. In this very context of the today's talk, human capital has to do with seizing all the talent and energy of millions of youngsters in our country who are currently nor studying or working and it is not because they want to. It's not because they don't want to, but because they don't get the options. They go knock on doors and get rejected. And it is quite a diverse group. We talk about most of them 
university students they finish their degree two three years and they are unable to get a job some mothers who flunked out of school people living in rural areas living in urban areas it is a big mixture and the idea of this program is precisely to be able to link these youngsters with productive activities in a process of learning training we call them trainees in small, medium, large businesses, in a local restaurant, um, someone with an occupation like someone who can teach them an occupation so that they start developing the skills they didn't get the chance to, but the ones they do have where they can actually capitalize on their talent that they have and they haven't had the chance to use for the productive sector. That is one of the main challenges as well as many others. Everything that has to do with the new ways of hiring, of uh, subletting of, some of the abuse of figures of power, many elements, but I think the core would be the youngsters. And w the, the target is more than Two is two millions. The target is two millions three hundred thousand youngsters. I would say this is the short-term goal: two million three hundred thousand youngsters, because that is what the statistics say. They are not working, but they are ready to. After achieving two million three hundred thousand, if there are still any youngsters around the country who look for an opportunity, the idea is to widen the program to guarantee that there is no man or woman or, or woman on this country over 18 years old who are not working or studying they want they need to be trainees learners it is a year long where they incorporate to the corporate activities with tutors they learn and develop skills and at the end they are giving a sort of certification a recommendation letter for these youngsters so in case they don't stay at the company they can knock on other doors with higher possibilities and this in one way or another integrates them with uh, social emotional skills and also gives grants them great culture access this is a program for inclusion that follows different veins and we are certain that it will help serve two main object objectives to bring back the given right to youngsters for the future they look for in their own country and also to bring some peace to this country given the relationship between violence and lack of opportunities. Thank you very much, Joanna. I want to ask you to first describe to me on a daily basis how the job you perform has transformed so that the audience knows what you do on a daily basis and then talk about talent and what it represents to you in terms of communicating and projecting industries and brands in a mexican market how far are we from what you see out there well my role i am in the business of digital transformation when we talk about digital transformation is quite a wide subject so again the evolution of activities models and processes within a company and the impact they represent in society at the end of the day the evolution comes in hand with technology we are on board of a technological transformation on four different areas we work with I mean, if it's, if it's not coming from your culture, it's hard to achieve it on the other areas. We work a lot, firstly, on culture, on the organization, because normally companies have been structured for a very long time in silos, quite independent areas working on their own things, each one. So governance starts changing completely. We look for collaboration models that are really connected to culture. And on the other hand, we have technology. More and more, we see the need to, inver to invest in tech, in technology, not only for marketing, but also in processes and data. At the end of the day, we need, especially being a pharmaceutical company, and at the end of the day, our goal is to improve people's lives, how can we use data in our benefit? Joanna is coming from Coca-Cola to a company like Pfizer. I mean, restrictions are completely different. There is a huge contrast in terms of communication and restrictions 
taking into consideration the consumer, putting it at the putting them at the core. So please explain to us quickly the contrast. Yes, two completely different worlds, but one and same user, and with the same end user, we see a complete evolution not only from the media but also the way they regard health. For example, we see generations that are a lot more preventive than previous generations, which is something we love, of course, because we want to get the necessary information, get to the consumers so that they make informed decisions and that we can innovate and bring the very best to the table. Karin came from Venezuela, but she considers herself as a Mexican citizen, but she also... and. She also started in publicity agencies talking about communicate telecommunications and we are at a point in which we feel quite concerned about what's going on with 5G given the amount of information and the promptness of the same. How do you live this every day? I would start from data, just like Joanna said, what's one of the most important things is being responsible for marketing communications and market research in the telecom company the most important element is data being able to use the media for the benefit of people and with the intention of adding value otherwise technology would be pointless we need to look at it with the possibility of adding value to people's lives to be able to say this allows me to include a youngster this allows me to give a better to provide a better better service it gives you some some particular things in that sense i would say that in our profession people in the business of communication naturally have these very soft abilities like creativity collaboration in publicity nothing is achieved alone today we need to start developing the ability to transform knowledge into behavior and then delve into this ability of diagnosis and observation to be able to solve problems with a joint vision I think a key element is technology because it puts people in contact at the same time, gives us so much data and this data we need to turn it into real insights in the favor of people. I think that would be one of the most interesting things to say on how technology connects human resources and what we can offer as a company and as a sector. And if I may, even to allow us to tell our stories, not only television, I work in a television and we know what's happening down there, but platforms and social media, what is it getting? The, how you, do you tackle your audience with campaigns, with some stories, some of the campaigns we were discussing that was very heard of and quite successful? We have Luisa Maria, Luisa Maria Alcalde, in the United States, experts forecast that robots will create 15 million new jobs in the next decade as a result of automation. A lot of people are quite frightened about this subject, but it should really entertain us. Automation and artificial intelligence. However, robotics will also take at least 25 million jobs in the same period. The ministry you are chairing, do you see the risk for Mexico? Is this a matter for the secretary of OIT? To know how we're going to manage it. We were with the Mr. Guy Wright. He visited us here in the Minister of Labor. Tomorrow he will be giving a conference in the Anthropology Museum. So beyond being scared, we need to seize this moment to see how we can start activating productivity from different economic units of companies, to seize technology, to be able to strengthen ourselves and expand ourselves. One of the huge challenges we have in the country, given the inequality levels, is that technology does not reach everyone. We see this 
when implementing this program, for example? How can we get to these people who have no internet access, they don't have a mobile phone through which they could get access to a um, social program, to a um, service. And the challenges it entails in terms of public policies, integrating everyone who's not integrated yet into this world of technologies, internet, you name it. Here's some interesting data. There are higher digital skills among the youngsters, but 1,200,000 youngsters have managed to be registered through the platform. But some other 800,000, we literally have to go knock on their doors because they lack the access and integration. And the same goes for the productive sector. In our country, most of the ones, most of the ones generating jobs are small companies however they are quite distant from these technology and mechanisms that would allow them to improve their processes to be more productive it is a major challenge at a, in a very in a rather short period of time so again how can we use technology in our country is there anyone at the minister of labor who is getting the picture of potential work loss and creation in Mexico. Are you doing something related to technology, risk in employment and where Mexico should be moving into? We have an area in the ministry, it is a social inclusion area and the subject it works with is the future of jobs. What is going on with this new revolution and how can it impact the market labor? Is there a period of time to present this report, this study? Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the previous administration, I know this because as a journalist, I know what's going on in the region, but the first effort was launched already for the picture. Did you inherit this information into this new administration? Yeah, we inherited it. We have some information that helps us carry out diagnosis. And we want to reintegrate it, taking into account that we deem that there that some areas of the country were not integrated i think in a few months time we can come up with a specific plan to face these challenges in the future yes because as you know banks are firing people due to automation same goes for automotive companies they are firing people there are companies like Adidas who are taking their production back to Germany and the whole subject of sweatshops in Asia they are also working with this future challenge the automation dilemma is just right here for some companies is either investing in technologies especially thinking of sweatshops for a very long time Mexico had very low costs now we have automation and here's quite an interesting dilemma because of what it represents for Mexico. Interesting because it has to do with the interests of new generations, self-employment, being able to support not only in self-employment but in the production units. The whole organization of the current government, the problem was we stopped producing. We need to start fostering production in the fields in the southeastern area of the country and this is going to give a boost to the economy again creating more jobs perhaps there will be losses in other sectors due to automation it will be more violent it will get there in the short term but we also can start creating the jobs we left aside for many years Gabby in Europe there's this data I remember I read an article when that it said that every high-tech job developed in STEM it multiplies job times five in the same vein I think we need to have the vision from the government or from the company we need to foster constant learning and evolution on behalf of on, on the side of the companies and from the side of the individual what I said to my team is nobody is going to come give you things in a silver platter you need to show initiative and will power to always show the will to learn having this self-learning experience the sense 
in ancient times people learned things because they didn't uh, they did it on their own but now we have schools we have universities and we were learned to talk to be taught in a format where we sat down and listened to classes but i think we need to come back to the initial spirit where it is up to you to have to have a job if you didn't study certain careers you won't have a job we need to look for the multiplying factor and the new professions today it is normal for us for to see some things on a daily basis but there might be people sitting here that are community managers i am a creator who are content creators storytellers there are so many names that years ago didn't even exist i i discussed this out there but i remember in publicity i would get to a classroom it went to a room and it was the room of the end arts and they were all doing a spotless craftsmanship job and if the client wanted to change the copy you needed to do every single thing from scratch it was a lot of job to come up with a press article so we leave this again however with the need to have all this analysis capacity we need to transform data into insights communication and positive things in people and i think the key is there how do we see these jobs into the future and i always say the future is today we i mean we are told to be very negative but we're not negative we're realists we're realistic because when you talk about keeping talent like youngsters who just arrived and want to be directors in less than a year is great they have this momentum how do you live this i want to go back a little bit to learning because if i see a virtue in the new generations is the need for learning unlike yes relearning as well because at the end this is something they want for themselves on behalf of Pfizer we will be a part of the program Uh, we will be a part of the program for youngsters and in addition to that we are providing technology and we're using technology to ensure this constant learning we see the line the very thin line between job and life and it's coming from technology and now it is a responsibility of people to learn and you as a company if you give them the chance to learn that is already a competitive advantage because the new generations when it comes to keeping your talent is it a serious challenge yes it is a serious challenge i love dividing between retention and engagement of talent because in order for you to keep your talent there are some key elements especially the wage a person could be there just because of the compensation and wage they get but we want to be a step further how do we really get people who are working with us to be really part of the purpose of the company to feel committed beyond just being retained many factors come into play not only learning well-being as well that is already a strategy and the responsibility of the company to ensure this well-being that they can strike a good balance in their lives that is a demand from them at the end that is something we offer making sure that generations stick with us currently how do you make sure you keep your talent because there's a lot of competition in the creative world Well, as a whole company, there are a lot of internal initiatives. We call we we work with something we call emotional salary that goes beyond the money and the growth opportunity we can present them. But the context as a as a global vision with a with a wider vision. I loved what you said about engagement, because the truth is. We fall into a category where where it is very attractive given the mobility of technology and we have found a lot of interest from the youngsters to peers the world of communications. We have a program called Talentum. We've been working with it for quite a few years. We go look in universities for people who 
want to join us. Something along those lines, but the thing is we work directly with universities, we get people who want to be there and you start understanding their interests and then you walk them around the company and they say no I like marketing no I like finances I like regulations that is something we were not doing so these plans are very important I think telecommunications are the whole telecom and the technological industry there might be people here sitting down who say oh, wow that would be amazing to work in a mobile phone company Google Facebook it is a market that is very attractive today but when you are actually in the market you realize you are following a crazy pace so then you start having trouble with the balance with the job life balance we in Telefonica want to make people understand this idea of adding value to the lives of people in Mexico via connectivity. When you connect with these principles, when you connect to the things we do in our foundation to close the gaps of connectivity, to democratize access, it is then that you start having people who deeply connect to the company and it is always easier to keep them cheerful and keep them happy. I want to finish this with a comment. I mean, I think it's worth saying you're professional women working very, very long days. Because there is something about the engagement of an employee that has to do with perks. I've heard of... What does the Ministry of Labor think when we talk about human capital? One of the factors has to do with the quality of infrastructure for a worker to really profit from the job. How do we... How, what, what can you tell me, Luisa Maria, in terms of daycare centers for working moms? With no doubt, we have women who have it even harder to incorporate the labor work because they look after their children. They are caring for their children, for the sick, for the senior citizens. And we need this infrastructure. We need it available and strengthened, but specifically with the case we had by the former Cedesol, it was such a corrupt program, highly deficient. And was it useless? Totally? Yeah, it was totally useless, for sure. It was packed with corruption, so we need to start cleansing it because that is not a sustainable model. We need to widen and strengthen the fact that the government could do more, not only in education, the primary level, but way back from the fact that women have access to daycare centers, safe daycare centers, daycare centers that can guarantee their children are safe. This week on Monday, especially you representing private sector, private universities are giving quite a thrust as well. There's this new council for investment, employment, creation. And it is very important because the need for private investment is acknowledged. In the cross with artificial intelligence, new technologies, new apps of new technologies, I feel very much like listening to Luisa Maria Alcalde say what will be heard from the private sector in terms of technologies and the path Mexico is moving. Just like Kennedy said, I want the man to be on the moon. What does Luisa Maria Alcalde think in terms of this in the private sector? What is your proposal? The creation of this council was very important. It allows us to tackle regional realities. The idea is to have integrated councils by private sector, social sector, and the government itself to start understanding and tackle regional problems, especially when understanding there will be not enough growth in our country should there be no public investment. It is not enough to have the public investment. We need private investment. We need certainty, stability, and openness to all of these investments. 
and in the sense of this technology industry that on the other hand we see that youngsters want to be there less and less do they care about traditional jobs they want to perform in this scenario so i think it's a fertile land to help these industries grow in our national territory and in the same way can they pick up new talents and develop better skills in the pool of youngsters we have we are at a curve we have a demographic bonus we need to take advantage of if we don't take advantage of it now the truth is it is at the decreasing point already so it's great to have the spirit of we agree with the search of youngsters for attractive industries today for it to be to give us more opportunities do you want to say something there is another subject related to attracting investment not long ago the world economic forum announced in medellin colombia the center for artificial intelligence interestingly enough like two weeks ago, IBM announced they are taking to Brazil the creation of a center for artificial intelligence. And you know what it's going to do? It will start researching on what the apps for artificial intelligence will be in the industry. Who wouldn't love a center like this in Mexico? Who is in charge or to what extent, Mr. Ministry, Mrs. Ministry, can we bring these type of organizations that will help Mexico and will help the Ministry of Labor to give this step forward. What is the strategy? The strategy is, is headed by Alfonso Romo, attracting these investments, but it's not him on his own. He is together with the government, with the council. I insist it is integrated with the other factors as well making our country attractive not in the old scheme that it was because of the low wages but because it is a country with huge potential for these investments to be capitalized on i am told we are out of time funny for me since i work on tv i just hope i'm just opening the floor for one two question tops we have one over there two over there i finished this session Thank you, Ministry. I wanted to talk about many other things, but time flies. There is no microphone. Can you please make it out loud? Can you make your question out loud? ¿Qué hay más allá de los jóvenes? Sí. Bien, y la última y me voy. Excelente pregunta. Con eso nos despedimos. Adelante. And we're closing with these two answers. Talking about that subject, there are some important challenges in terms of legislations and regulations. The possibility of widening in these services has been entertained, but also a shared leave for both mom and dad. That would have to be checked with the Congress. We have carried out several meetings to explore the possibility of working together with the productive sector and entrepreneurs as such to see how we can move forward. We are a country that has definitely lagged behind in this matter. 
trying to extend the period, but not only extend it to make it shared between both parents. And there is no doubt that we have the problem of not growing. That's why jobs haven't been created. It's not only about youngsters. It is just focused and more dramatic for the case of the youngsters. Yes, it is completely tested that the youth has been facing the hardest situations to incorporate the labor market. That's why we have this specific program. But that does not mean to say that the other group ages are not suffering from many complications to enter the labor market. That's why we believe this intention, the council that aims to having more public investment and exploit private investment to extend to industries that have not been extended in the country, that will also entail greater possibilities for people above 30 years. And always thinking that we need sustainable labor markets. There is no peace without justice. We want economic development, but through justice, and through the benefit being spread equally among everyone. Thank you very, very much. Thank you so much. I'm sorry I took more of the time. I think it was completely worth it. Have a good afternoon. Thank you.